let's embrace the chaos with the Pleasant family. Here we happen to be at the wedding of Lydia and Nate. They have friends and family that have joined in. And what do we have here? I'm pretty sure Eliza wasn't invited. She's just busy spying on the happy new couple. They even got matching tattoos. And here we have downstairs is Daniel and Eliza. Daniel is telling her, laughing at her, saying, that looks nothing like Mary Sue. You need to stop bringing her up. You're being paranoid. Eliza's like, I've been following her to the gym like for weeks and weeks. You can tell she's lost some weight. Eliza feels mocked because Daniel's just laughing at her because I looked at her. That looks nothing like her. Mary Sue would definitely never wear anything like that. She would never have tattoos or piercings. It's, you're, it's a joke. You're being ridiculous. And the party has moved downstairs. It's also a new year. Everyone's celebrating except for Eliza. She's so worried that it's Mary Sue. As you can tell, Daniel doesn't care. Eliza's keeping a close eye on Nate and Mary Sue, or like we know her as now, as Lydia Sterling. We can see that Eliza is just watching her, stalking the couple. Oh, and her ex-husband, Bob Pancakes, is here. She doesn't like that one bit. She doesn't like that Bob is talking to this look-alike. Eliza and Daniel were certainly not invited to this wedding or the after party. Eliza comes back in because she forgot her glasses. She is super angry. She swears. What is going on? She steps outside to cool off. She wants to know what Bob is doing and what is she doing? 
Eliza's going to find out what Bob has to do with this. And he's like, I'm the caterer, and they happen to be good friends of mine. It's like, stay out of my what? Life. You know, I'm a chef. That's why I'm here. Like, I don't know very much. I don't know a lot about Lydia, but it's definitely not Daniel's ex-wife, so. He says, can't you just stay away from me? You look awful, by the way. Like, I understand you had an awful couple years, but you're just a bitter, bitter old woman. And she's like, old woman, I am not an old woman. He's like, yes, you are. Don't come harassing me and do not harass my friends. Sterlings are on their honeymoon, so they're out of town for a couple days. Daniel welcomes Eliza home, but he's like, why are you home early? She's like, I just can't focus on about work. He's like, tell me what's going on at work. She's like, she just cannot get that out of her mat out of her head, what they talked about. You know. Daniel is very upset at Eliza. He says, you're letting your imagination get carried away and now you're getting in trouble at work. She got sent home early. Oh my goodness, she just can't sit still either. He says, you have to drop it. You have to let it go. That is not the person you think it is. You're going to get in trouble and end up losing your job. Eliza's like, you should back me up no matter what. He's like, you need to see someone professionally. She's like, I'm going to go. Oh, gross, Daniel. So Eliza takes it upon herself to go visit the Sterling household. Look like anyone's home. Looks like there's a car in the driveway. She's just gonna check the plates and run them. she's just gonna wander around their house looking in the windows see if she spots anything they have some interesting neighbors guys he's gonna go talk to Daniel and see if he can figure out what is going on with Eliza now he's not really too concerned Bob goes over to Daniel's house while Eliza's away to explain what she did the other night at his friend's wedding. 
him, bro. This is like the PT Kubar. Kubar. He's like, she's gone too far, you know. Bob let him know his concerns and said, if you recall, she tried to say I did something to her, like hit her in a basement or something. She's very paranoid. You need to have her committed or something. He's like, I am not going to do that to her, but I will talk to her. Dr. Nate Sterling has a new patient. Eliza has come to him regarding a lot of her stress. So he's getting all her information in. So he's giving her some medical advice. And he says, it seems like you're under a lot of stress. He says, I recommend you seeing a therapist that might help you. He says, I'm not that kind of doctor, but that might be great to have someone just talk to. You. You don't need to go around cleaning everything. So he said give her a full medical exam. I said, you do not have any shame. He says, you really don't have to be totally nude. I gave you a gown. She's like, oh, sorry. And he says, yes. Losing some weight would also help you. You need to exercise more. Nate just thinks that Eliza was flirting with him because she asked him a lot of personal questions like, oh, are you the doctor that just got married? Oh, what do you like to do? What does your wife do? How did you meet? And he just kept it short and said, you know, this is my personal. Basically, trying to be nice, but that's his personal life. All right, look who's here for lunch. <laughs> and Eliza's just leaving, maybe? I don't know what she's doing now. She can't still be stalking them, can she? Eliza, you need to go home. Nate said, I invited you over because I wanted to take you to lunch. Here they are having a romantic lunch. Uh -huh. 
But look what we have going on over here. Eliza is here again. This can't be a coincidence. Oh, and we also have Allie. What will happen if Mary Sue, who's now Lydia, sees them? Johnny Zest is here. Mitchell's here. Everyone's at this restaurant for lunch. Even Angela and Lilith are here. Ah, there's Daniel. Let's hope that everyone can stay on their own side of the restaurant. Eliza is just stalking them. Pretty much just following them. Well, that was a nice lunch, but Lydia's got to get ready for work. And Nate's got to go back to work. And Eliza's just standing there gawking at them. Could she be any more obvious? Like her family had lunch and had already left and she's the last one behind. No one else recognized her or said anything. And looks like the kids are off to school. Liza's there to make sure they are leaving on time. Daniel's just hanging out. Daniel basically tells Eliza, knew what you were doing with that restaurant. You knew that woman would be there and her husband. How dare you bring our kids and family there to check on them. You think she looks so much like Mary Sue and have no idea how Allie would take it or my other daughters. Uh, he's like, no, don't, where are you going? Get back here. They take the argument outside and Lilith just happens to come over. She does not know what to do. She's like, I'm just going to leave. They're obviously having an argument. Daniel says, you need to move out. This is like, I'm not leaving my kids. And he's like, you have no choice. You have taken this way too far. Eliza is super angry. Daniel has kicked her out of the house and told her to get it together. Or everyone's going to find out what we did. So stop trying to bring Mary Sue back from the dead. They killed her. They threw her into the icy river. Just because no one's found her body yet. Yet. But it is now spring. 
little Eliza is now living in San Mishuno. Lee. Things will go better for her, and maybe her and Daniel will reconcile and move back in. The kids are going to have lots of questions. So tune in Friday to find out if Eliza snaps Mary Sue out of her amnesia and causes more trouble for herself.